Hi everyone, this video is going to be for live swatches of the eyeshadows in Lorac's new Pro Palette Number no. 3. This has been recently released. It is available for purchase through Ulta for $44. As always, in this video I will show you swatches of the shades and then I will test the product out in full, then write a more thorough written review that will go up at AlloraBeauty.com. Once that is published, I will put a link to it in the description box below so that your more specific questions can be answered, whereas in this video I will give you more of my first impressions. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. That lets you be eligible for a ton of giveaways that I host for makeup, skincare, accessories, etc. And it also lets you know when new videos like this go up. And speaking of that, if you want to know the new makeup, beauty, and skincare items that have recently released on the market, you can check out my latest What's New in Beauty video, which I will link here for you. All right, let's get looking at Lorax Pro Palette 3. All right, so like the previous two incarnations of the palette, you have this very thin and sleek palette here with the sort of rubberized surface, and it's in this nude shade here. It closes via magnet, opens up, it has a good size mirror inside, and here are the eyeshadow shades. So there are going to be a total of 16 eyeshadow shades. The top row of eight shades are going to have matte finishes, then the bottom eight shades will have shimmering finishes. Alright, so here's an up-close view at the shades. It's very nice that Lorac palettes have the names of each shade underneath the corresponding pan. And so I will do two sets of swatches, the top row first, and then the bottom row of shimmering shades. And Lorac describes this palette as having soft and feminine shades with a formula that is velvety and smooth. And it also says that these are ultra pigmented and that you can use them wet or dry. I am not going to even try to apply the matte shades with a wet application and we'll see how the uh, application goes for the shimmering shades and see if applying them with a damp brush makes any sort of difference or is even needed. All right, starting with the top row of mattes, we have Blanc first, which is a soft cream. Next is Canvas, which is a pale nude. Cool Taupe, as the name suggests, is a light to medium Cool Taupe Brown. Pink Nude is a light nude with a peachy pink undertone, whereas this one has a yellow undertone. Clay is a light to medium warm toned tan or brown. Terracotta is a light to medium tan with an orangey yellow base. Dark Brown is actually more of a medium or neutral toned brown. And Jet Black is a midnight black. Okay, and as always, these are applied over primer. This is your top row of eight shades. You have good pigmentation on them. They go on smoothly. And they are all matte in finish, although the shade Clay here seems to have a little bit more of a satin type of finish. It has just a little more of a sheen to it, whereas a shade like Jet Black is truly matte in finish. It doesn't reflect at all or have any sort of sheen to it. Moving on to the bottom row, we start with Light Gold, which is actually a pale silvered peach, almond pearl, which is a pale taupey champagne, medallion, and this is also sort of a taupey tanned brown, it has larger flecks of silver on here, light pewter is a pale muted pewter shade. Amethyst is a deep reddish eggplant. Rose bronze is a rose undertoned brown, bronze. Dark mocha 
is a medium to deep chocolatey brown with a silver finish and truffle is a really deep smoky black so it's not a midnight black it's more of like a gray black again with silver shimmer in it okay so here is the second row of metallic finish shades for the most part also very smooth in texture with good pigmentation we did see that with medallion this is definitely more flaky and it has those larger more like gritty shimmer particles in there i'm going to apply this with a damp brush and see if we can improve the texture on that one and then Truffle I wish had a little smoother pigmentation, but uh, for the most part, it's also pretty good. All right, so again, over primer, I'm gonna swatch Medallion for you just with a regular application, no foiling or no damp brush here. You can see that it's flaky and kind of gritty. All right, and now I have sprayed the brush with a mixing solution, and you can see it definitely improves the application. It's now more of a liquid metallic texture and those flakes have really mixed in with the rest of the powder. So here it is up close. You don't get that um, spraying effect or fallout or at least not nearly as much as you do when you have a dry application. So to improve the texture of the medallion shade, I would definitely recommend applying it with a damp brush. All right, so there you have Lorax Pro Palette number three. My first impressions are that I am pretty uh, satisfied with the texture formulation and color or pigmentation of these shades. I know that I've seen several reviews, I haven't really read any of them in depth, but just browsing over them, it seems like people are having fairly negative reviews of this palette. So coming into this video, I thought maybe I would be disappointed, but I actually don't see really anything hugely negative about this palette. I do think that perhaps the one and two versions are more consistently better in quality, particularly with that medallion shade that was really flaky, but I don't think that this uh, palette is any huge departure from the quality of the previous two Lorac Pro palettes. Of course, I don't want to say that as my final opinion because I want to test them out, practically speaking, actually applying them to the lids, wearing them throughout the day. But in terms of first impressions, I think especially the matte shades have the same buttery, smooth, highly pigmented formulation that you would expect from Lorax um, shadows. And fairly consistent with that is the formulation for the shimmering shades. Uh, medallion, as you can see, was a departure when you apply it dry, but you also can get a beautiful finish out of it if you apply the shade damp. So I will definitely test these out for you in a look, and I will link the review with my final thoughts in the description box below. If you have this palette and have already tried it out, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below, or if you have any other comments you'd like to share. I hope that this video was helpful to you. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch, and I'll see you in the next video.
palette. So I rated it about a B minus, and I think if you're a huge fan of hers, then of course you'll want to pick it up for that reason, maybe 